Chapter 1 of Sermons of a Buddhist Abbot. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Sermons of a Buddhist Abbot by Soyun Shaku. Translated by Daisets Taithru Suzuki. Chapter 1 The Sutra of 42 Chapters. Having attained Buddhahood, the world honored one thought thus to be free from the passions and to be calm this is the most excellent way he was absorbed in great meditation subdued all evil ones and in dear part caused to revolve the will of dharma which was the fourfold truth and converted the five bhikshus kadinya etc inducing them to attain enlightenment again there were other bhikshus who implored the buddha to remove their doubts which they had concerning his doctrine the world honored when illumined all their minds through his authoritative teachings the bhikshus joining their hands and reverently bowing followed his august instruction the buddha said those who leave their parents go out of the home understand the mind reach the source and comprehend the immaterial are called kramana those who observe the two hundred and fifty precepts of morality who are pure and spotless in their behavior and who exert themselves for the attainment of the four fruits of saintship are called arhats the arhat is able to fly through space and assume different forms his life is eternal and there are times when he causes heaven and earth to quake next to see an agaman. at the end of his life the spirit of the neagaman ascends to the nineteenth heaven and attains arhatsha next is the skridagaman the skridagaman ascends to the heaven after his death comes back to the earth once more and then obtains our hardship next is the shrotapana the shrotapana dies seven times and is born seven times when he finally attains our hardship by the severance of the passions is meant that like the limbs severed they are never again made use of the buddha said the homeless kramana cuts off the passions frees himself of attachments and understands the source of his own mind penetrates the deepest doctrine of buddha and comprehends the dharma which is immaterial he has no prejudice in his heart he has nothing to hanker after he is not hampered by the thought of the way nor is he entangled in karma no prejudice no compulsion no discipline no enlightenment and no going up through the grades and yet in possession of all honors in itself this is called the way the buddha said those who shaving their heads and faces become kramanas and who receive instruction in the way should surrender all worldly possessions and be contented with whatever they attain by begging one meal a day and one lodging under a tree and neither should be repeated for what makes one stupid and irrational is attachments and the passions the buddha said there are ten things considered good by all beings and ten things evil what are they three of them depend upon the body four upon the mouth and three upon the thought three evil deeds depending upon the body are killing stealing and committing adultery the four depending upon the mouth are slandering cursing lying and flattery the three depending upon the thought are envy anger and infatuation all these things are against the holy way and therefore they are evil when these evils are not done there are ten good deeds the buddha said if a man who has committed many a misdemeanor does not repent and cleanse his heart of the evil retribution will come upon his person as sure as the streams run into the ocean which becomes ever deeper and wider if a man who has committed a misdemeanor come to the knowledge of it reform himself and practice goodness the force of retribution will gradually exhaust itself as the disease gradually loses its baneful influence when the patient perspires the buddha said when an evil-doer seeing you practice goodness comes and maliciously insults you you should patiently endure it and not feel angry with him for the evil-doer is insulting himself by trying to insult you the buddha said once a man came unto me and denounced me on account of my observing the way and practicing great loving-kindness but i kept silent and did not answer him the denunciation ceased i then asked him if you bring a present to your neighbor and he accepts it not does the present come back to you the man replied it will i said you denounce me now but as i accept it not you must take the wrong deed back on your own person it is like echo succeeding sound it is like shadow falling object you never escape the effect of your own de evil deeds be therefore mindful and cease from doing evil 
the buddha said evildoers who denounce the wise resemble a person who spits against the sky the spittle will never reach the sky but comes down on himself evildoers again resemble a man who stirs the dust against the wind the dust is never raised without doing him injury thus the wise will never be hurt but the curse is sure to destroy the evildoers themselves the buddha said if you endeavor to embrace the way through much learning the way will not be understood if you observe the way with simplicity of heart great indeed is this way the buddha said those who rejoice in seeing others observe the way will obtain great blessing a kramana asked the buddha would this blessing ever be destroyed buddha said it is like a lighted torch whose flames can be distributed to ever so many other torches which people may bring along and therewith they will cook food and dispel darkness while the original torch itself remains burning ever the same it is even so with the bliss of the way the buddha said it is better to feed one good man than to feed one hundred bad men it is better to feed one who observes the five precepts of buddha than to feed one thousand good men it is better to feed one srotopana than to feed ten thousands of those who observe the five precepts of buddha it is better to feed one skridagana than to feed one million of srotopanas it is better to feed one anagaman than to feed ten millions of skridagaman it is better to feed one arhat than to feed one hundred millions of anagamans it is better to feed one pratiya buddha than to feed one billion of our huts it is better to feed one of the buddhas either of the present or of the past or of the future than to feed ten billions of radiaka buddhas it is better to feed one who is above knowledge one-sidedness discipline and enlightenment than to feed one hundred billion of buddhas of the past present or future the buddha said there are twenty difficult things to attain or to accomplish in this world one it is difficult for the poor to practice charity two it is difficult for the strong and rich to observe the way three it is difficult to disregard life and go to certain death four it is only a favored few that get acquainted with a buddha sutra five it is by rare opportunity that a person is born in the age of buddha six it is difficult to conquer the passions to suppress selfish desires seven it is difficult not to hanker after that which is agreeable eight it is difficult not to get into a passion when slighted nine it is difficult not to abuse one's authority ten it is difficult to be even-minded and simple-hearted in all one's dealings with others eleven it is difficult to be thorough in learning and exhaustive in investigation twelve it is difficult to subdue selfish pride thirteen it is difficult not to feel contempt for the unlearned fourteen it is difficult to be one in knowledge and practice fifteen it is difficult not to express an opinion about others sixteen it is by rare opportunity that one is introduced to a true spiritual teacher seventeen it is difficult to gain an insight into the nature of being and to practice the way eighteen it is difficult to follow the steps of a savior nineteen it is difficult to always be the master of oneself twenty it is difficult to understand thoroughly the ways of buddha a monk asked the buddha under what conditions is it possible to come to the knowledge of the past and to understand the most supreme way the buddha said those who are pure in heart and single in purpose are able to understand the most supreme way it is like polishing a mirror which becomes bright when the dust is removed remove your passions and have no hankering and the past will be revealed unto you a monk asked the buddha what is good and what is great the buddha answered good is to practice the way and to follow the truth great is the heart that is in accord with the way a monk asked the buddha what is most powerful and what is most illuminating the buddha said meekness is most powerful for it harbors no evil thoughts and moreover it is restful and full of strength as it is free from evils it is sure to be honored by all the most illuminating is a mind which is thoroughly cleansed of dirt and which remaining pure retains no blemishes from the time when there was yet no heaven and earth till present day there is nothing in the ten quarters which is not seen or known or heard by such a man for it has gained all knowledge and for that reason it is called illuminating the buddha said those who have passions are never able to perceive the way for it is like stirring up clear water with hands people may come there wishing to find a reflection of their faces which however they will never see a mind troubled and vexed with passion 
is impure and on that account it never sees the way but monks do away with passions when the dirt of passion is removed the way will manifest itself the buddha said seeing the way is like going into a dark room with a torch the darkness instantly departs while the light alone remains when the way is obtained and the truth is seen ignorance vanishes and enlightenment abides forever the buddha said my doctrine is to think the thought that is unthinkable to practice the deed that is not doing to speak the speech that is inexpressible and to be trained in the discipline that is beyond discipline those who understand this are near those who are confused are far the way is beyond word and expressions is bound by nothing earthly lose sight of it to an inch or miss it for a moment and we are away from it forevermore the buddha said look up to the heaven and down on the earth and they will remind you of their impermanency look about the world and it will remind you of its impermanency but when you gain spiritual enlightenment you shall then find wisdom the knowledge thus attained leads you anon to the way the buddha said you should think of the four elements of which the body is composed each of them has its own name and there is no such thing there known as ego as there is really no ego it is like unto a mirage the buddha said moved by selfish desires people seek after fame and glory but when they have acquired it they are already stricken in years if you hanker after worldly fame and practice not the way your labors are wrongfully applied and your energy is wasted it is likened to burning an incense stick however much its pleasing odor be admired the fire that consumes it is steadily burning up the stick the buddha said people cleave to their worldly possessions and selfish passions so blindly as to sacrifice their own lives for them they are like a child who tries to eat a little honey smeared on the edge of a knife the amount is by no means sufficient to appease his appetite but he runs the risk of wounding his tongue the buddha said men are tied up to their families and possessions more helplessly than in a prison there is an occasion for the prisoner to be released but the householders entertain no desire to be relieved from the ties of family when a man's passion is aroused nothing prevents him from ruining himself even into the maws of a tiger will he jump those who are thus drowned in the filth of passion are called the ignorant those who are able to overcome it are saintly arhats the buddha said there is nothing like lust lust may be said to be the most powerful passion fortunately we have but one thing which is more powerful if the thirst for truth were weaker than passion how many of us in the world would be able to follow the way of the righteous the buddha said men who are addicted to the passions are like the torch carrier running against the wind his hands are sure to be burned the lord of heaven offered a beautiful fairy to the buddha desiring to tempt him to the evil path but the buddha said be gone what use have i for the leather filled bag with filth which you have brought to me then the god reverently bowed and asked the buddha about the essence of the way in which having been instructed by the buddha it is said he attained the srotapanna fruit the buddha said those who are following the way should behave like a piece of timber which is drifting along a stream if the log is neither held by the banks nor seized by men nor obstructed by the gods nor kept in the whirlpool nor itself goes to decay i assure you that this log will finally reach the ocean if monks walking on the way are neither tempted by the passions nor led astray by some evil influences but steadily pursue their course for nirvana i assure you that these monks will finally attain enlightenment the buddha said rely not upon your own will your own will is not trustworthy guard yourselves against sensualism for it surely leads to the path of evil your own will becomes trustworthy only when you have attained our hotship the buddha said o oh monks you should not see women if you should have to see them refrain from talking to them if you should have to talk you should reflect in a right spirit i am now a homeless mendicant in the world of sin i must behave myself like unto the lotus flower whose purity is not defiled by the mud old ones i will treat as my mother elderly ones as elder sisters younger ones as younger sisters and little ones as daughters and in all this you should harbor no evil thoughts but think of salvation the buddha said those who walk in the way should avoid sensualism as those who carry hay would avoid coming near the fire the buddha said there was once a man who being in despair over his inability to control his passions wished to mutilate himself the buddha said to him better destroy your own evil thoughts than to do harm to your own person the mind is lord 
when the lord himself is calmed the servants will of themselves be yielding if your mind is not cleansed of evil passion what avails it to mutilate yourself thereupon the buddha recited the gatha passions grow from the will the will grows from thought and imagination when both are calmed there is neither sensualism nor transmigration the buddha said this gatha was taught before by kashyapa buddha the buddha said from the passions arise worry and from worry arises fear away with the passions and no fear no worry the buddha said those who follow the way are likened to warriors who fight single-handed with a multitude of foes they may all go out of the fort in full armor but among them are some who are faint-hearted and some who go halfway and beat a retreat and some who are killed in the affray and some who come home victorious o oh, monks if you desire to attain enlightenment you should steadily walk in your way with a resolute heart with courage and should be fearless in whatever environment you may happen to be and destroy every evil influence that you may come across for thus ye shall reach the goal one night a monk was reciting a sutra bequeathed by kashyapa buddha his tone was so mournful and his voice so fainting as if he were going out of existence the buddha asked the monk what was your occupation before you became a homeless monk said the monk i was very fond of playing the guitar the buddha said how did you find out when the strings were too loose said the monk no sound is possible how when the strings were too tight they crack how when they were neither too tight nor too loose every note sounds in its proper tone the buddha then said to the monk religious discipline is also like unto playing the guitar when the mind is properly adjusted and quietly applied the way is attainable but when you are too fervently bent on it your body grows tired and when your body is tired your spirit comes weary when your spirit is weary your discipline will relax and with the relaxation of discipline there follows many an evil therefore be calm and pure and the way will be gained the buddha said when a man makes utensils out of a metal which has been thoroughly cleansed of dross the utensils will be excellent you monks who wish to follow the way make your own hearts clean from the dirt of evil passion and your conduct will be unimpeachable the buddha said even if one escapes from the evil creations it is one's rare fortune to be born as a human being even if one be born as human it is one rare fortune to be born as a man and not a woman even if one be born a man it is one's rare fortune to be perfect in all the six senses even if he be perfect in all the six senses it is his rare fortune to be born in the middle kingdom even if he be born in the middle kingdom it is his rare fortune to be born in the time of a buddha even if he be born in the time of a buddha it is his rare fortune to see the enlightened even if he be able to see the enlightened it is his rare fortune to have his heart awakened in faith even if he have faith it is his rare fortune to awaken the heart of intelligence even if he awakens the heart of intelligence it is his rare fortune to realize the spiritual state which is above discipline and attainment the buddha said o oh, children of buddha you are away from me ever so many thousand miles but if you remember and think of my precepts you shall surely gain the fruit of enlightenment you may standing by my side see me always but if you observe not my precepts you shall never gain enlightenment the buddha asked a monk how do you measure the length of a man's life the monk answered by days the buddha said you do not understand the way the buddha asked another monk how do you measure the length of a man's life the answered by the time that passes during a meal the buddha said you do not understand the way the buddha asked a third monk how do you measure the length of a man's life the monk answered by the breath the buddha said very well you know the way the buddha said those who study the doctrine of the buddhas will do well to believe and observe all that is taught by them it is likened to honey it is sweet within sweet without it is sweet throughout so is the buddha's teaching the buddha said o oh monks you must not walk on the way as the ox that is attached to the wheel his body moves but his heart is not willing but when your hearts are in accord with the way there is no need of troubling yourselves about your outward demeanor the buddha said those who practice the way might well follow the example of an ox that marches through the deep mire carrying a heavy load he is tired but his steady gaze looking forward will never relax until he come out of the mire and it is only then that he takes a respite o oh, monks remember that passions and sins are more than the filthy mire and that you can escape misery only by earnestly and steadily thinking of the way 
the buddha said i consider the dignities of kings and lords as particles of dust that floats in a sunbeam i consider the treasure of precious metals and stones as bricks and pebbles i consider the gaudy dress of silks and brocades as a worn-out rag i consider this universe as a small as the holy of fruit i consider the lake of an anabatapta as a drop of oil which one smears the feet i consider the various methods of salvation taught by the buddhas as a treasure created by the imagination i consider the transcendental doctrine of buddhism as a precious metal or priceless fabric seen in a dream i consider the teaching of buddhas as a flower before my eyes i consider the practice of dhyana as a pillar supporting the mountain sumeru i consider nirvana as awakening from a daydream or nightmare i consider the struggle between heterodox and orthodox as the antics of the six mythical dragons i consider the doctrine of sameness as the absolute ground of reality i consider all the religious works done for universal salvation as like the plants in the four seasons end of chapter one recording by jandia